We are now ready for our first session of the day. I call at the stage as panelists, Mr. Augustinos Kostadinidis, Solutions Director at IBS, and Mr. George Agathangelou, Professional Services Director at IBS, who will be presenting the interesting subject in our days, that of cyber security. Gentlemen, the stage is yours. Good morning, Kalimera, and welcome to the first international conference of the Ochi Alliance. We are very pleased today to be presenting to you this amazing new subject of cybersecurity, something that's emerged over the past few years through COVID, and actually it's, right now it's booming. So, I'm George Agathangelou. I am the Professional Services Director at IPS. And today, together with Agustinos, we'll be talking about cybersecurity. But first, a short introduction into IBS and who we are. Born into the cloud, IBS has been working successfully into the ICT industry for more than 15 years. Uh, we are an IT systems integrator and a partner with all major vendors like HP, Microsoft, Dell, CrowdStrike, Proofpoint, and many, many more. Our headquarters are based in Limassol, Cyprus. We have a branch office in Greece, Athens, and we service customers globally. So, let's start with uh, cybersecurity. Please feel free to interrupt at any given time to ask questions. We like questions. Hopefully, we know the answer. So, the modern workforce has shifted to reflect the market dynamics of the past several years, and especially through COVID. What was referred to as the new normal is now just normal. Firstly, employees and contractors work from anywhere and everywhere, whether that's their home, their office, or somewhere in between. Secondly, employees have access to more data than ever before through more channels. While more data is being generated, it can also be accessed through a variety of channels like mobile phones, laptops, or collaboration tools like Microsoft Teams. And thirdly, employees are leaving and subsequently joining other organizations at an unprecedented rate. The global pandemic was a huge catalyst for people to reevaluate their current position and make a change. So what does this mean for organizations? As a result of these dynamics, insider threats have increased by 44% in 2022. And as the threats grow, so do the data we need to protect. And we expect it to grow by 23% up until 2025. And as data grows, there will be more for data for organizations to protect. Organizations need to determine what data is most strategic. How do we protect it? Who has access to it? And how do we get rid of it? How do we retire it? Think GDPR. According to the Voice of CISO report, 50% of CISOs have stated that protecting data has become an ever-increasing challenge due to the great resignation due to people shifting jobs. So the threat landscape has fundamentally changed. Attackers are now increasingly targeting people and not infrastructure. The move to the cloud is intensifying that threat. Threats today are not only activated by people, but they are also attackers are relying on people to click and do the job for them. Over 99% of threats rely on users to run the code. For example, a user must download the malicious attachment, open the file, and click to enable the macros. About two-thirds of malicious links are credential phishing. Its success purely depends on tricking the user to click on the link, go to the website, and enter their credentials. As users shift to the cloud, attackers and threats naturally follow. Shifting to the cloud also includes threats from social media 
and mobile applications. The rapid rise in malware-free business email compromise and email fraud is costing organizations billions of dollars globally. From June 2016 up until July 2019, according to a report from the FBI, we know that $26.2 billion US were lost from email fraud. And this is just what we know of. So, stopping breaches today is challenging because many organizations are stuck solving problems of yesterday. Or our industry has focused a great deal of importance on stopping malware. But stopping breaches requires a much broader approach. Remember, delivering malware is not the goal of an attacker. It's only a means to an end, only to obtain initial access, and only one step towards an objective. Naturally, organizations want to prevent as much as possible, but no security technology is 100% effective, and an effective security strategy must plan for when an infiltration occurs. Fast and effective response is critical in stopping today's breaches. The first stages of an attack are the most critical, when the adversary, the attacker, is establishing an initial footprint, achieving persistence, and performing discovery. Stage eight is when the attacker, the adversary, starts moving laterally across the organization. This is a pivotal point in time in the attack. We know based on years of observed data that the determined adversary achieves lateral movement within a few hours. We call this breakout time. After this point, your job as a defender gets significantly more complicated and a lot more expensive. So this sets up a race between us and the attackers. And to win it consistently, you should consider the rule of 1, 10, 60. Winning organizations have the power to detect threats within a minute, investigate and understand the, the attack within 10 minutes, and respond and remediate within 60 minutes. 1, 10, 60 is affordable for everyone and can be adopted by any size of organization. Today, with modern security operation centers as a service, even an SMB can be protected like a large enterprise for a fraction of the cost. Endpoint is part of the foundation of a modern security strategy. Endpoints have become the epicenter of the risk in major organizations. Some say they have emerged as the new perimeter our identities are intrinsically linked to the endpoint. We use endpoints to authenticate into critical applications and services. The endpoint in most situations is the gateway to the cloud. For the customer, for us, the endpoint is the key to our productivity. For the attacker, the endpoint is the doorway to launch their attack. As I mentioned before, over 99% of attacks of threats rely on the user to run the malicious code on the endpoint. This is why the endpoint has become the new battleground. Endpoint security is critical, but for many organizations it's hard. It's hard because attacker sophistication requires more and more advanced protection techniques and highly skilled security staff at a time which there is a huge skills gap and companies cannot find anyone to help them. It's hard because endpoint security needs to scale across thousands of PCs and users, delivering strong protection without impacting productivity. These trade-offs historically put endpoint security out of reach for the majority of organizations. <coughs> So, endpoint detection and response has changed the way security was delivered with lightweight agents and cloud-native architecture. As a result, a combination of a next-generation firewall, advanced email protection, monitoring, and next-generation antivirus 
are the stepping stones into a successful security strategy. They should now incorporate protection techniques like machine learning, artificial intelligence, behavioral analysis, sandboxing, and many, many more. That's it from me. I don't know if you guys have any questions. I hope you understood part of it, if not all of it. <laughs> anyway, we are here all day, so you can ask us any questions later on. I leave the baton to my colleague, Agustinos Costandinidis, who will explain a bit more. Good. Buddy also from me. My name, as my colleague mentioned before, is Agustinos Constantinidis, and I'm the Solutions Director of IMBS. So, after hearing what my colleague George said, what do you think? Do you know everything now? Are you fully covered to secure your data? I don't think so, right? So, there are many questions. I am sure you have many questions to, to ask, like uh, what should you do to keep your company secure? What are the best practices? What is the budget you need? Do you need to spend a fortune to secure your company? These and many other questions might arise from the previous slides. And the answer is you can do anything, but you cannot do everything, obviously. But that sucks, right? So, and it sucks because how you will be secure if you don't do everything? Or what do you have to do if you cannot do everything? The answer in general answer basically is the more security you have, the more secure you are. But nobody's 100% secure. This is a given. Let's start with the basics that are a must have for more or less all companies, all sectors, and all sizes. Okay, here we see a small cabinet, and this is actually a small IT room of a small to medium-sized company. I assume some of you saw this, I hope not, but imagine that you get, you enter your company's server room, and you see this, or something like this, I hope not, not worse than this. You don't know basically here, and you want to fix it, and you don't know where to start, how to start, who to call to do it, and you don't even know how it has to look like when it's fixed. And what is the relation with security? It's exactly the same thing. You have no idea how to start. The same exactly applies for security, for cybersecurity, sorry. It is not something on the shelf that you just get in the store, you buy it, and you're done. You need to invest time, money, and resources to keep your company, your data, and most importantly, your customers secure. Now, to start with, let's see what do you have to do before you work with someone or your internal IT department to make your company secure, before you start spending money, and before you start unplugging the cables from this cabinet. First thing first is, know what you have. With know what you have, we mean that the only way to know is to hire someone, highly recommended to hire a third party, as you hire an auditor, for example, uh, to run a security audit for your company. In general terms, security audit includes all of this plus more. <clears throat> for example, security audit should include security review, including the physical access of your offices and data, executive health report, recommendations, technology roadmap, 
network infrastructure documentation, risk analysis, obviously, and many, many, many more. The end product, when you finished with these tasks, is a report that will have all the details on what you have now, what problems you have, what risks you have, and you face currently, basically, which, by the way, you will be surprised with the risk you will see, and what you have to do now, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, and so on, based on the risk appetite. For business people, because most of us here were business people, this report is a kind of a business plan, not only for cybersecurity, but for your IT strategy in general. Now, you have the report on your hands. More or less, you know where to focus. So, what's next? How do I start? Where do you go? What, what do I have to do? You need to plan your next steps, <clears throat> which are, you, you are thinking about it. What I have to buy? Who I have to call? What vendor, who, 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 uh, which vendor I have to follow? How I'm going to configure my products, my security products? I mean, there are so many options out there that you need to focus somewhere. However, unfortunately, I cannot answer this question for you today. But uh, let's see a few basic security recommendations we have for you. So I'll try to be as simple as possible. I'll make a small sketch here. Mr. Landas, you stay in a house or apartment, castle maybe? Castle, okay. So this is Mr. Landas castle, something like this. Excuse me for my sketch abilities, but I'm not very good. So this is your castle, Landas castle. So. We have this castle here that obviously Mr. Landas sleeps, eats, and uh, lives here. I will not say anything else yet. <laughs> so the castle, I believe it has some windows like this, right? So maybe a pool here, yeah? Pool. And obviously it has a door. No, 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 wait. We're going to get there also. So it has a door. The first thing is to secure, basically, so Mr. Landers don't want anybody getting his castle without his authorization. So the first thing is to secure the entrance, right? The same applies for your company. You have the internet here, right, that everybody's accessing nowadays. You have the door of your company here, that all the data goes in and all the data goes out. So the entrance of your company is the place that all the data, as I said before, comes in and goes out. As you understand, is considered as the most important part to secure. Like you secure the gate of your castle, uh, the entrance has to be guarded and secured as much as possible. Next generation firewalls, and next generation firewalls obviously are more advanced than the proprietary firewalls, that's why we call them next generation, uh, have more or less this basic functionality, which is intrusion detection, to detect an intrusion in your company, intrusion prevention, to prevent an intrusion in your company, Web filtering to filter who is to to filter your web traffic your web traffic excuse me coming in and going out application filtering to manage some applications what is going to be allowed and advanced malware protection. Uh, I will not get into more detail on this because Christos didn't let me too much time. But so now. We protect the entrance of Mr. Landas, right? So, Mr. Landas is not at home. Need to know if someone will get in his house. Usually we add 
cameras, right? I think all of us here will have our cameras, even house or office at our mobile. It's easy to monitor. There are many tools that you can use, like uh, when there is a movement, send me a picture, an email, or whatever it is. So the second step, the second level of security, by the way, this is level one. The second level is monitoring. So, as we said before, protecting your entrance is a must. But what happens if a threat comes from inside the network? For example, a user downloads something. Or a user brings a USB stick in the company to copy something, and the USB stick has something bad, a malware, or whatever it is. Morning is, monitoring is essential to prevent an attack and detect automatically suspicious tasks within the network, between the users, and on the applications that the company is using during their day-to-day -day operations. By monitoring, as George mentioned before, if you remember, of course, uh, monitoring corresponds to early detection, evaluation, and response. The 1, 10, 60 rule. Finally, we got also level 2. And the level 3 is the user. We need to secure the users. This is the last level of security, which is the endpoint. Advanced endpoint security, next generation endpoint security, you call it as you desire. It's the same thing. It is important to use an advanced endpoint protection and not just an antivirus that works with signatures like the old days. The reason is simple. With today's security breaches, and especially with the latest ransomware attacks, I think all of us heard this uh, word again, traditional antivirus systems cannot detect these zero-day attacks. This, si this slide shows in blue the functionality that a typical next-generation antivirus has. So, for example, you have a web filtering, you have device control to disallow or lock the USBs we mentioned before, Threat intelligence, etc., etc., etc. Ah, also the endpoint. It's a PC, it's a laptop, it's a tablet, it's your phone, it's the devices you are using on an everyday basis. They are managed, fortunately or unfortunately, by a human, a person, an employee. The endpoint is the last or the first, sometimes, castle of defense. In case there is an attack, sorry, it's the last castle of defense when there is an attack, sorry. However, it is important to secure the endpoint. For example, when you travel outside the entrance of your company or when you are inside the entrance of your company. Other than the above, functionality, uh, we need to consider the user, the human, the user awareness training, tools, whatever you call it. Nowadays, many and various security companies, such as Proofpoint or Fortinet or whatever it is, provide a kind of automated user awareness tools. So you can train your, you can educate your uh, users to recognize the threats and basically be suspicious. I will not get into, into more detail, but uh, we can discuss further on regarding this uh, user awareness uh, tool. So, this is the layer three. Usually, this is the uh, strategy we follow to most of our clients and corporations. You have the first level here that filters everything inside the company. If something, if something passed the uh, entrance point, you have the monitoring, so you can realize early and detect early that something is 
not uh, is uh, is uh, something is going wrong here. And even if it passes the monitoring point, you have the advanced endpoint protection on user uh, devices that you uh, secure this part also. Plus, this part is moving all the time, so you need someone to protect them. Thank you very much. Uh, feel free to contact us uh, later on during coffee break at our Athens or Lima Sol office physically, online in our website, uh, in our social media, or just give us a call. Any questions? Any? No? Yes? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kostadinidis and Mr. Agathagelou. That is definitely a very interesting topic, and I'm sure our audience have gained some valuable information so as to take preventing measures for their businesses. <laughs>